the difference between uh, Sir Alex and Arsene Wenger? The differences? Um, maybe in terms of man management, how is that? Because obviously you get someone like Roy Keane saying that no, there was no man management involved with Sir Alex. But what's your experience like? But it depends on what you call uh, man management. For me, it's, it's the way you interact with your players and especially the way you coach the players. Mm. So the big differences would be so two major ones. Um, Arsene would be on the pitch every day, coaching, actually coaching, uh, preparing the preparing the sessions and, and running the sessions. Oh, okay. Okay. With the assistants, but he's he's in charge. Whereas Alex uh, was acting as a English manager, which is uh, pass on the, the responsibility and to the assistants. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And first team first team uh, coach coaches and that's uh, the first major difference and then in terms of um, um, assess not assessing but reviewing and and talking to the players after the games evaluating the mm -hmm. performances so Alex is straight during the moment when it happens or straight after in the dressing room whereas um, Arsene would wait the next day uh, reflect watch and then talk to us in the dressing room in a, at the training center. Okay. So sometimes you would wait two days to get the assessment and his views on the game. He would he would rarely talk straight after the game. Okay. In the dressing so you just let it get changed and then you meet against one of them? Yeah. Okay. If you had the choice to play, I mean, obviously you clearly enjoy playing under Sir Alex Ferguson. Did you enjoy it as much playing with Wenger too? Yeah, I enjoyed uh, playing and I enjoyed uh, his vision. The way he was preparing, it was all about Arsenal, the way we play. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter who we face, we always wanted to to play quality football on the ground uh, with short passes uh, and yeah, progress forward yeah. in a nice way. I mean, the way Sir Alex Ferguson went about his business, the, obviously the, the director of football ball that you had yourself at Rennes. Do you think that's uh, the reason that United don't have a director of football now? Is because maybe Ferguson's already was taking a step back and being the delegator, and that kind of role is similar to what a director of football would do anyway. Yeah, it's uh, it's a different model, mm -hmm. and uh, it used to to work with Sir Alex because sometimes he wouldn't come to training for two three days, mm -hmm. and he was probably scouting and meeting agents, mm -hmm. doing other. Other part of the of the role. Mm -hmm. That's when uh, Steve McLaren, Brian Kidd, uh, Carlos Queiroz yeah, yeah. would take charge of training, and and yeah, it would be business as usual, even if the gaffer wasn't yeah. there. It's interesting because as United fans, we talk about yeah, the importance. Yeah, a lot of them want a, a director yeah. of football, don't they? I mean, is that something that you think is a fair thing for them to ask for? At the current state yeah, of it's, the it's, club? Yeah, it's fair because there's so much uh, to do and prepare the team. Mm -hmm. There's much more uh, media demand for Ole. Mm -hmm. And yeah. again, you don't show up uh, in front of the media without preparing. So he's got to prepare for that. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more interaction with agents. Mm -hmm. You know, they are much more there. Even players have their own physio, they've got their own uh, fitness coaches. Yeah, yeah. You, it's an all different ball game. Um, so you need more than one person to, to deal with that and, and get the results. I think as well it shows, um, during the Ferguson era, it shows the importance of the assistant manager and what a key role he had. If they're the ones on the training ground interacting with the players, you had the, were you under Phelan and Kairos and Mullenstein was it? Or, yeah, yeah. Uh, Walter Smith. Oh well. yeah. How, I mean, Steve McLaren, yeah. Out of so those, which one was the most influential for you? I enjoyed all of them because they all came with different ideas and it was refreshing. That's why also uh, Sir Alex was, was special because he was clever to pick the right assistant mm -hmm. and um, clever enough to completely delegate mm -hmm. the day-to-day -day work. And for the players it's refreshing mm -hmm. because you have to, it's a new challenge when you have a new assistant, a new first team coach. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that's a key part of uh, of the success at United, yeah. having uh, having different different uh, philosophies, different not philosophies but 
different way of working. Mm. You know? Because even within this Ferguson area, you see the transitions from a style of play. I think when you when Kiros came in, people say that again you became more of a continental style, and it's like I said, it's really undervalued uh, part of that area that people forget. Yeah, yeah, no, true, true. Uh, with uh, Carlos, especially, uh, we we did a lot more tactical work, mm -hmm. and for the English, it, I mean, UK players, it was uh, difficult to accept that sometimes we would don't touch the ball during 15 minutes just because we're doing tactical work, so positioning, mm -hmm. shadow. I was new for them; they were frustrating. I knew it from Italy and from France, so for me it was also not nice but I knew it would be uh, uh, beneficial in, uh, yeah. in the games. Yeah. You don't think of that at the moment though do you? No, no, you <laughs> just want to kick the ball yeah. and play. <laughs> yeah.